What's up guys, it's Eva Tin here. Now this is part of my series that I am trying to give you guys at least my personal recommendations when it comes to the updated hauling fits that have recently happened with the warp core stabilization changes as well as the uh, nullification module that's changed in the high slot. It's a brand new module. Now a lot of these fits are almost identical, but some of them have changed pretty significantly. In this video, I'm going to be covering the Kaldari ships, or I should say the line of industrial haulers. Uh, now, this line of ships are the ones that I've had the second most uh, experience flying. I mostly fly the Amarian ships. Kaldari was the next one that I have the most experience with, so naturally I did them next. Um, I have not flown any of the T2 ships, like the Blockade Runner, as well as the Deep Space Transport for Kaldari, but they seem to fly from what I've heard from my court mates, uh, from the haulers chat. I've gotten some feedback on some of my fits or what are the best ones for high, low, and null sec, um, things like that. So just a disclaimer, I'm not saying you have to fit your ships this way or this is the only way to do it and these are 100% cookie cutter, sorry, cookie cutter. Uh, honestly, hauling, hauling ships are probably the most, probably the ships that need to be changed the most, especially in the low slots, mid slots. It highly depends on where you're going, what you're hauling, uh, things like that. So just to let you guys know, full disclaimer, this isn't like cookie cutter fits. If there is a very type, uh, like a niche type of hauling that you do, or a different style, let me know down in the comments below. I'm more than happy to talk to you guys. If you guys need help or feedback with some of your hauling fits, uh, let me know as well. So that is just kind of a quick disclaimer. So this video, I'm gonna be a little bit quicker with the fits. If you guys want a more in-depth uh, video about as to like why I'm making certain decisions, check out the Amarian one. Uh, I'll be giving some reasons here, but I don't want this video to be over 20 minutes. Regardless, here's the first one, the Terra. These, type, these line of chips, the ones that have this bonus here, the ones that have the max ship velocity bonus have typically really low tank, huge cargo capacity, uh, but very, very slow align time. So these ships are designed to be hauling very, very large things that take up a lot of space, like um, packaged ships, maybe huge modules, things like that, but that don't have a very, very high value. So if you're flying this ship, I highly suggest you keep your value well under 100, maybe 150 million isk at the most. That's just me personally. That way you are a very unlikely target for a gank. Um, here we're, we are just completely maximizing our cargo. So here in the rig slots, we have the medium cargo hold optimization ones. You can upgrade two of these to a T2, but that like triples the price for some reason, the T2 cargo hold um, rigs are very, very expensive. Here in the mid slots, we are running four of these medium shield extender twos. Now, if you don't have the skills for shield extender twos, you're more than welcome to use the meta modules. Uh, we use an EM amplifier, which is just a passive module that increases our EM resist because without it, it is absolutely zero. So we wanna make sure we patch up that hole. Uh, I thought about adding a thermal resist one here in the this like last slot, but I just figured the raw HP of an extra shield extender was a bit better. So basically it gives us more um, HP across the board against all resistances versus just this one, uh, if that makes sense. So down in the low slot, I mentioned this before in my last video, but as you need less and less cargo capacity, make sure you're swapping out these cargo hold expanders because uh, these cargo expanders do two things. One, it's kind of a wasted slot if you have, if you're un like, have like unused space, but also two, it actively reduces your HP because it actually hurts your structure. So as you notice, if I turn, uh, if I take out this slot, we actually get a little bit more EHP. And this first one, I would recommend you replace it with the damage control. So that way we get about an extra 2000 EHP. And then as you need it less and less and less uh, cargo, that's you wanna replace it with an inertial stabilizer just to help our align time and get off the gates a bit faster, reducing our travel time as well. So, and once you get to this point, once you get down to about 12,000, 12 to 13,000 uh, meters cubed of space, uh, at that point, I suggest you start using the Badger because the Terra is really, really slow. It doesn't have a huge amount of power grid or CPU for tank. So if you're an alpha character and you're using the Terra, I would suggest that fit. If you're an alpha character and you're not hauling a ton, let, let's say you're hauling 14,000 or even the Terra or the Badger can go up to 18,000 with this fit. Um, we have a lot of room here in the mid slots for two large shield extenders, a uh, shield amplifier too, and an extra shield amplifier a thermal. So this is basically just increasing our resistance. You'll notice our resistance is much, much higher. Our EHP is much higher. And at this point, uh, with this amount of EHP, it would take about two gank nados to take you down and if they're throwing two gank nados at you you must be hauling some really really uh expensive stuff so uh, as an alpha hauler you really only have two defenses when it comes to uh trying to prevent yourself from getting ganked one is just carry very inexpensive cargo just be a very um unfavorable target or two your ehp is so high that a single tornado can't take you out and they have to do something a bit more nuanced or they just ignore you altogether because they just know you're too heavily tanked 
Uh, here in the rig slots, same song and dance, cargo hold optimizations, you can increase those if you want. And here in the low slots, you're just gonna replace the cargo hold expanders with a damage control, as well as inertial stabilizer. Um, I'm a little on the fence, and if you don't actually have the best skills, like let's say you can't fit two large uh, shield extenders, you're more than welcome to replace um, one of these large shield extenders with two mediums, and then just run two EM amplifiers as well as a thermal as well. And if you can't fit any of these T2s, you're, you can always just use the meta module version uh, to replace those as well. So that is the alpha fit for the Badger. Now the Omega fit, the Omega fit is much, much different because now we can use a cloak as well as the interdiction nullifier, and it is infinitely safer to actually travel through low and null sec um, with these fits. So the interdiction nullifier is pretty much only good in wormholes and uh, null sec space. Um, it's, I would highly suggest you probably get into a T2 ship before you start going into null with like a badge or something like that. But if you absolutely have to, this is probably the best fit uh, for it in my opinion. Um, so if you're gonna be doing the cloak trick, obviously you're gonna do the cloak trick with the uh, micro warp drive here in the mid slot. Um, I have a ton of videos on the micro warp drive cloak trick. There's a ton of videos on YouTube in general, but I, I might do an updated video with the micro warp drive cloak trick with the interdiction nullifier, but I mean, all you're really doing is pressing one more button. Now, the reason why I actually have a micro warp drive and an afterburner is because just in case you do get scrammed, something weird happens, uh, you know, the server takes are not in your favor, you mess up the warp cloak trick, whatever it is, and someone scrams you, uh, your best chance is just to burn back to the gate. Because if they scram you, your micro warp drive is deactivated, and what you want to do is overheat this and just try and crash the gate, which means you're just reapproaching the gate to jump through. Because if they attack you, they can't actually jump that gate for another 30 seconds. So that gives you a full minute of time to kind of jump through the, through the gate and get away. Here in the mid slots, uh, again, we have a large and a medium shield extender as well as the EM amplifiers, and the, and the low slots is the same song and dance. Um, you can, in this case, I actually did add a warp core stabilizer. And what this will do is, as you're doing the cloak trick, um, I would highly suggest if you are seeing a gate camp, you just activate the warp core stabilizer just in case. You might get insta-lock, something might happen as you're exiting cloak, but as long as you activate this, and even if they scram you, you should have enough scram strength to be able to get away unless they have a faction scram. That's a whole nother video. But these are just kind of additional lines of defense to help you get off the gate uh, if that is the case. So um, yeah, if you guys have any questions about the T1 haulers, let me know down in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. If you guys have, have any ways to customize your fits or questions, let me know down in the comments before. And now we'll go ahead and take a look at the T2 haulers. All right, and now for the T2 haulers, now we are looking at the Crane, which is a blockade runner for the uh, Kaldari Empire. And if we look at this, these ships are pretty unique in the sense of they actually are able to fit a covert ops um, cloaking device, which means you can now cloak while warp. So in this thing, you don't have to do any kind of weird nuance like micro warp drive cloak trick with this type of ship. You can just, right when you break your gate cloak, you can immediately activate your covert ops and now you're cloaked and you can actually enter warp all at the same time. So this align time is a bit skewed. So if you're ever looking at a uh, fitting like this and you do see a prop module or propulsion module like a micro warp drive or an afterburner, it will increase the time just because it's, it's assuming that you're moving faster. So with this fit, we actually have an align time of four seconds, which is pretty good. I've actually tried messing with the low slots, adding inertial stabilizers and some here. I really did not want to sacrifice any um, cargo space because blockade runners in general are just very, very tight when it comes to um, cargo space. So this will just allow you to move more things. Here in the mid slots, we're actually able to fit a compact shield extender as well as two shield EM amplifiers because our resistance for th thermal and kinetic are really high. Re explosive is pretty respectable, but I really wanted to add two of these to um, increase our resistance. I'm not a huge fan of having active modules on a cloaked ship because you can really only activate active modules within a few seconds of your cloak and you can't do it while cloaked and all that stuff. So I prefer just to have it passive and it helps with smart bombs, all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of reasoning um, behind it. And down in the low slots, if you do need to have more space, we can also add these in here. So I believe with both of these, and these are just my, my personal skills. So you actually might be able to hold more than this because my Kaldari um, industrial hauling skill isn't at the max. So you might be able to push 12, maybe 13,000 uh, meters cubed. Uh, with this fit, I'm not exactly sure. So again, if you are going, this this ship is very safe through low sec, null sec, whatever it is. Um, if you do find yourself in a bubble, the very first time what I would do is uh, activate your covert ops cloak, activate your interdiction nullifier, and then enter warp 
and try and get out of that bubble and try and get this uh, interdiction nullifier on cooldown. Now, if you do get caught in a bubble and this interdiction nullifier is on cooldown and you're not able to use it, what you can always do, which is what I like to do, is start aligning out of the bubble, turn on your um, cloak first, and then usually have about five seconds to turn on any kind of uh, non-combative module, nothing that does damage or affects other ships, like an afterburner. So you can actually align out, turn on your cloak, activate your afterburner, and that way you're able to burn out of the cloak or out of the bubble much, much sooner. So uh, blockade runners are arguably probably the safest ship in the game to enter low and null sec with. So this is the fit I go for. There isn't a ton of tank on this. This will help you survive uh, you know, a handful of smart bombing battleships. But if you are caught, you're pretty much dead in the water. And again, your best bet is just to burn back to the gate, overheating your compact um, afterburner in order to approach the gate and jump through. Uh, but these ships are very, very squishy. Uh, their, their first and almost only line of defense is their cloak. If you do get caught, you're pretty much dead in the water. But they are a very, very safe ship. Now, the next one we're going to be looking at is, and the last one, is the Bustard. So we're going to go ahead and look at the high sec one. And the reason why the high, why the Bustard is very different is because, um, why I really have like two fits for it is because there are some people that almost exclusively stick to high sec for some of their hauling. I did that for a long time. And for a while, I did go into like low and null sec as well. So with high sec fits, I kind of tend to, to favor more towards just the heavy tank at that point if you do get attacked it's just mostly um hauling gankers that are going after you so tornadoes catalysts things like that and all you're trying to do is just survive long enough for concord to show up when it comes to low and null sec there's not always going to be uh you know 10 15 20 ships waiting for you and there's no concord coming so sometimes you actually want to favor more for acceleration and speed to, in order to crash back to the gate because that's typically your best chance of survival when you are getting caught uh, by players on a gate so uh, here we are with the Bustard, which is the deep space transport for the ship. Just as, just as a reminder, these ships get benefits to micro warp drives, afterburners, all kinds of stuff for overheating. Uh, and on top of that, they do have a dedicated um, like fleet hangar that holds all their stuff. So you actually don't need cargo expanders at all for this type of ship. Um, they can initially start off with uh, 50,000 meters cubed, and it goes all the way up to 62,500 meters or something like that. Uh, for the deep space transport so that's why with the deep space transports you can just tank them to all hell and not really have to worry about cargo expansions at all like here in the low slots so um, we'll finally take a look at the fit here you're just going to do your typical micro warp drive cloak trick here um, if you do end up getting caught um, and if there's no issue or i should say there's no reason also not to like if you are going through udama or a very dangerous system and you feel like you're going to get ganked you're not 100 percent sure you're more than welcome to try the cloak trick and you can actually overheat your mid slots just in case um so that way if you do get ganked or scrammed or something like that you can just you can just turn on these modules and they're already overheated and with them overheated we actually have a really respect to 153,000 ehp uh, i try to favor more towards the thermal and kinetic because that's what most damage of catalysts do with the third highest being explosive in case there's like taloses and things like that but um i did try to add like another uh, multi-spectrum uh, shield hardener here down the low, but it just ended up just giving us less EHP overall. So I just felt like it was better to have these. And I'm hugely in favor of having less modules to overheat or just to use in general if you do get ganked. But with the DST, it is a bit different just because the bonus is so strong. Down here in the low slot, we do have a damage control as well as a co-processor just to give us enough CPU in order to fit some of these other modules. Um, I think I did it mainly just to fit the large shield extender, but as you can see, if we turn it off, uh, we're overheated on the CPU. And I did a power diagnostic because we needed the extra power grid and also gives us a little bit of extra uh, shield HP as well. Uh, down here in the cargo, I do not know why that has a, <laughs> a random uh, explosive shield hardener. I'll be sure to remove that uh, and update it for you guys here uh, on the fit. So that is the high sec bustard. The low and null sec version is pretty much the same thing. All I did was swap out the EM um, multi-spectrum shield hardener for a compact afterburner, because again, when you're in uh, low or null sec and you do get scrammed um, or something like that, one of your only chances is just to crash back the gate with an overheated compact afterburner. Now, I did add a warp core stabili stabilizer. So the reason why I did not add one for the high sec version is because typically, if you are getting ganked in a DST in high sec, you've already been scouted out. Someone's already scanned your cargo and they know you're coming 
and they're going to bring more than enough scrams to lock you down. That That is just going to happen. These people have been ganking and been doing the same song and dance for long enough to that having one warp core stabilizer, um, they're not going to be sure. Or, or I mean, they already know that that you're that they're going to lock you down. Um, but in low and null sec, if they do try to get you, typically they're relying on bubbles or sometimes they are relying on um, a long range scram or disruptor to lock you down. If there is a heavy interdictor like a Phobos or something like that, no matter what kind of warp core strength you have, they're going to lock you down. But regardless, this is just another line of defense. So you, what you want to do is try to activate your cloak trick. That is your first line of defense. If that fails, um, or if you do sense yourself inside of a bubble, you want to activate your compact interdiction nullifier. But if there is a gate camp, I highly suggest you do the cloak trick and just activate your warp core stabilizer anyway. So that way, if they're able to insta-lock you out of your cloak or whatever happens, at least you have enough um, warp core strength to hopefully just break out of that scram no matter what. Uh, same thing here. We're going to overload these. We are having less tank, but again, because the dual prop, we are able to have at least a second option to crash the gate. And we have a really respectable tank. Now, unless they have like double webs or they're managing to find a way to bump you off, um, you'll find all kinds of gate camps. Some of them are extremely organized, running anywhere between like three to eight ships covering various roles like Weber's and uh, like a heavy interdiction uh, ship and all that kind of stuff. But other times they're pretty disorganized and you have, you're, sometimes you have more than enough time to kind of crash the gate and escape back to high sex. So um, yeah, so the compact interdiction nullifier is for wormholes and null sec for the most part. But um, oh, I, I suggest you pretty much always bring this for the most part. You can maybe even throw this on the high sec fit too as well if you do have room for it, but you might as well just have it and not need it, then need it and not have it right. And that's pretty much it, guys. I would love to know down in the comments below um, if you guys like the fits, if these are fits that are going to be using here in the near future, or if you guys have different variations of fits that you like to use for the Caldari haulers, let me know down in the comments below. Hope you guys take care and you fly safe.